Hey everyone, in this week's Wisdom Wednesday, I talk about a really important subject, how to stop procrastinating. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or a wealth creator, you've got to be taking lots and lots of action. There's lots to do if you're building yourself out of your business. There's lots to do. So much to do. Problem is, around 50 to 60 percent of business owners and investors procrastinate. And if you're procrastinating, you are stealing money from yourself, as well as not living out your highest potential. So let's get into this. We're going to go through nine reasons that people procrastinate, and then I'm going to give you the solutions to procrastinating. Um, I'm also going to share two hidden forms of procrastination that get most people, but they're not even aware of it. So the nine reasons that people procrastinate. First of all, people are weak at time assessing. And anyone that's been in business knows this really, really well. When you first start out in business, you've got this project to do, and you know, you'll know you always underestimate how much time is involved, and you'll typically underestimate how much of a budget is required for that as well. That's typical mistake for a, a, a business owner. As you get more experienced, uh, you become far, far better at working out how long something is going to take. The... Next reason, and number two for procrastination, is saying yes to too much. So you're taking on way too many projects or you have too much to do. We're going to get into that in a second. This is really, really important because that leads to a particular emotional state. So saying yes to too much is a big reason for procrastinating. Number three, you're a perfectionist. If you're a perfectionist, you, you're trying to get things perfect. You're worried about failing and not getting it right. And uh, you'll procrastinate for that reason. You feel overwhelmed. Now, this comes back to the first two points. If you can't assess time effectively, how, how much time a project is going to take, then, and you're saying yes to too much, it leads to a state of overwhelm. Now, overwhelm is a very... How would you explain overwhelm? Uh, overwhelm is a deep sense of not being able to... First of all, in overwhelm, you can't prioritize. That's the first thing you'll notice. In overwhelm, you feel like, oh, I, 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 don't know, I don't know where to start. I don't, I, I don't know what to do. I just, I just don't know. It's just too much I can't comprehend. And... It's actually a quite a low-grade form of stress, by the way, this overwhelm. So chucking the perfectionist on top of that as well, and you know, you could have that just <laughs> to the nth degree. You don't know where to start. Now again, that leads back to that overwhelming experience. So when you don't know where to start, there's a reason for that. And this will come back into the solution for procrastination. But you don't know where to start. You don't know enough uh, about the project or, or the role. And so that's leaving you feeling like overwhelmed about what you, you've got to do next. Next one is low energy. So <laughs> anyone would notice this. If you have downgraded energy for whatever reason, you're tired then it's far easier to feel overwhelmed. Because uh, overwhelm is not a robust state. In, in fact, overwhelm means you're closer to breakdown e emotionally and as a human being. So it's no, not a robust state. And in the same way, if you've ever seen a two-year-old who's really tired, they throw temper tantrums. You, you, once you're tired, your body can't handle more. And so it will start to shut down. You have that feeling of overwhelm and start to withdraw from priority tasks. The other reason for that is you can be working too much. Now, people won't often share that. But when you take time out, your brain and mind rejuvenate and can actually step back and start to reprioritize projects. Negativity is another one. So 
Oftentimes in the wealth creation journey, there are what we call long slogs. And in long slogs, you're doing lots and you're not getting much back. You're not getting much feedback back. Um, and so when you've got those long slogs happening, you're going to be doing lots and you're not getting that feedback. And when we talk about feedback, that's positive feedback. And for each of you, that'll be different. I mean, cash is one of them. Cash is really good, solid feedback. Um, you know, you, you'll all know what your positive feedback is. But if, if, if you're in those long slogs and you're not getting the positive feedback, which is just how it is sometimes when you're in slogs, uh, you'll get negative. And once you start to get negative, again, you start to think, oh, what's the point? Uh, you know, that, that kind of emotional disposition. Once again, it is really, really easy to be um, taken over by procrastination. Uh, notifications and not organizing your day. So as an example, one of the things that I do is I organize my day so I have very long blocks, meaning I must have, be able to have my head in a project for two hours and nothing can stop me from concentrating for that two hours. I'll actually listen to uh, audios that lower my brain waves, by the way, in from uh, beta down into alpha so that when I'm working in those long blocks, I'm moving into deeply relaxed states that I can really concentrate it. Now, that's a solution to um, uh, procrastination. What leads to that, to, to procrastination? Again, if you've got a phone that goes ding, ding, or Facebook messages, or your computer's going boom, 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 with all the notifications. I mean, people are mad these days. I turn all my notifications off. Or you uh, allow people to interrupt you. And I see so many business owners doing that. They allow people to interrupt them. You know, you want to be able to shut your door, table, or take, take, take your phones off so that you can get into those long flow states of concentration. Okay? If you're distracted all the time, bang, 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 um, and then you try to get back into a project, it doesn't work. It's the flow state that gets you that real deep access to it. Uh, another reason is culture. So some cultures sort of, usually this comes from the business owner, they uh, aren't, you know, there's a the, the bit lapse on keeping people focused on getting things done in, in certain time frames. And so it becomes normal and acceptable for sort of people to muck about and do nothing and relax. Now, there's, as I said, I was going to share two hidden forms of procrastination. And the two hidden forms, and this gets a lot of people. First of all, I was too busy to do such and such. And if you find yourself saying I was too busy to get those things done, uh, it's usually an excuse. It's usually not real. It's the way that you will justify not doing something. Now, let's look at why we don't do it. We don't do it because it's uncomfortable. Um, again, if I go back through those, the, the list of the nine reasons, regardless of the reason, we feel uncomfortable doing that. We, we feel like we don't know enough. Or we're not sure that that overwhelmed, confused state. So what we'll do is instead of owning that, people that say, I didn't have time, that becomes a rational excuse. So you're way better off sort of, and here's a good thing to do, if you find yourself saying I didn't have enough time, then really just study where your time went and you'll usually see that you're lying. Okay, You're lying. I, I work with really amazing producers and it's just amazing how much can get done in a day when you prioritise time effectively and you knock out all sorts of time-wasting, uh, low low returning activities. And low returning activities, by the way, in, in my mind, is like, a lot of the self-indulgent TV or very shallow thinking TV shows and things like that. Sure, it's great to switch off and we'll be talking about that in a second. But, you know, do what's meaningful. So, with if you find yourself saying, oh, I don't have time, just see where your time's going. You usually see you're lying. The, the other hidden uh, procrastination is busy work. So, you get to the end of the day and you have been really busy but you have been doing all the things 
that are more like priority tasks, not what you're supposed to be doing or, or needing to do to really shift things for yourself. And so you sort of can feel satisfied. Well, I was real busy. I did all this stuff, but you're just doing what we call busy work, not the big shifting things that can make a huge difference to your business, to your investing, to your life. Okay, so how do you stop procrastinating? Well, the first thing that's really important to understand is we go back to the one of the main reasons for procrastination is a sense of overwhelm. I, I, I just feel I've just got too much on. Okay, I've just got too much. So it's really important to start prioritizing. And what you do is you prioritize to do the jobs that get you the greatest return. Okay, the greatest return or the greatest outcome. You are organized to do those jobs first. But if you can get uh, this down on paper or on your project management software, and you can actually break everything up and really look at it, and then you can go, okay, I need to do that one first, and I need to do that second, I need to do that third, fourth, fifth. It, that can move the overwhelm outside of your consciousness because you're no longer overwhelmed because your logic mind has a structure and can easily see what needs to be done next. So really important to do that. You know, you, we've all experienced it. I have it all the time. I've got so much to do often with uh, clients and businesses that I'm involved with. And if I just leave it all in here, it's like, no wonder I'd be going, oh my God. But to, to write it down, to document it, to have a really good look at it so I can prioritize it, sort of helps my mind move out of that confused state to, well, yeah, well, I'm just going to do that job, then that job. And I have to think about the fourth, fifth things I've got to do. That's already on my list. The next one, and this is a bit of a strange one, is, you know, and because people don't think about this, but your health, okay? As I said before, low energy, low energy states. You're, you're tired. Uh, the moment you have low energy states and you're tired, it, it, it's far easier to feel overwhelmed. Now remember, overwhelm leads to procrastination. So working on your health, ensuring that you are fit, vibrant, make sure you work out, make sure that you do physical things that keep your energy high, make sure you eat lots of really good quality food, you don't drink too much, and you don't do things that make you unhealthy. The other thing that's really important to do is to take time out away from your business, away from investing, away from those things that keep this thing working all the time. And this seems strange to people when they're overwhelmed because they've got so much to do. Um, but you've all experienced this. You've all experienced on a Friday, as an example, um, just being stressed out and overwhelmed and concerned about this and concerned about that decision you've got to make. And... You go away for the weekend and you come back on Monday and all of a sudden those problems don't seem like problems anymore. And there's a reason for that. If you stay in highly stressed states way too long, again what happens is you, the, your consciousness feels overwhelmed. Okay? You've all experienced this. So if you've had four five days of stress in a row, by the fifth day... You're feeling uptight, and even the smallest things are, are sort of getting to you. Okay? At, at that point, again, you're overwhelmed, you're closer to breakdown. And that doesn't mean you're going to have a mental breakdown, but you could if you stayed in that state. But it's, it's a breakdown state. The physiology isn't working efficiently. When it's not working efficiently, it's like that two-year-old toddler that I talked about before. Okay, it's tired, and anything else that comes to the system's like it's too much. Okay, all that stuff leads to overwhelm and procrastination. So you've got to take time out. And the best one, by the way, is meditation. Meditation is the most incredible thing on this planet for reducing overwhelm, for reducing um, fears. As an example, if you're a perfectionist, reducing fears. Uh, meditation is incredible. It transcends a lot of the junk of the mind and takes you into a very deep, peaceful state where you no longer feel stressed, no longer feel overwhelmed, you actually feel really clear about what you do next. So remember, it's really important to understand this. The more stress that you have, the more likely you are to experience overwhelm, which is too much is coming at you, 
and that leads to procrastination. So the more rested you are, the um, and the, the more centered you are, which is what meditation does, the less emotion and less stress is attached to anything or anything you do when you meditate, actually. Uh, next one is a reward system. I really use this. Uh, one of the things that I did for many years was I used to do three-month work stints, and then I'd take my family away for a month, six weeks. We'd go surfing or we'd go traveling overseas. And so what you're doing when you set reward structures up, it's a discipline. Okay, so if, if you look at when you're procrastinating, it's like, oh, I don't want to, uh, and you feel terrible inside because you know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So a reward is once you've got your list there, I've got to get through these things. Once I've done this, then I'm going to go and do this fun thing. Once I've done this, I'm going to go and eat a meal in that restaurant. So reward systems will really help you uh, with procrastination and celebrate, celebrate victory. So remember I said before that if you're in long slogs and you're not getting a lot of return, so return means feedback, positive feedback about what you're doing. You know, you might be an investor and you might have been working on a property development for four or five months. You know, <laughs> no money's coming in. You're just spending money on that development. Um, you've, you've had hassles and all sorts of things that you're dealing with. Again, that takes you into that sort of more depleted, low energy, uh, negative cycle, way easier to, to feel overwhelmed, uh, and then procrastination sets in. <laughs> and so celebrating small victories is really important things to, to do. And, and in, in some ways, by the way, that's taking mastery over how, how you think and putting effort and energy into celebrating um, those small wins because those small wins help you build a, 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 a motivational uh, energy and f another one is to connect to your vision constantly and so as an example as a meditator you know twice a day I'm really connecting after my normal formal meditations I'm connecting to my vision I'm, I'm, I'm imagining what it is that I really want. I see my wife and I doing certain things together. And again, just reconnecting to that, if it belongs to this thing here, the heart, because you can have ego visions. Heart visions are completely different. Heart visions are truly deeply meaningful to you on a deep level. An ego vision is all about status. It's all about making you look better or fit some other picture that's actually not yours from deep inside and plenty of people do that but the, the more you can connect to your vision and remind yourself of your vision about the, which is gives you your why that is another thing that needs to happen to help you overcome procrastination it's interesting uh, big big procrastinators I, I observe disconnect from their vision a lot they're not really clear about what their mission is and of course that makes sense doesn't it if you know you're you're procrastinating and you don't have that real why it's pretty hard to bust out of it even if you use all those other approaches that I've just shared with you because your vision is the most important thing that's what you <laughs> were given a heart for right to have a vision our visions move us forward exciting visions hope all those things are what keep us moving and evolving and so working with your visions just totally important anyway ladies and gentlemen i hope you got a lot from that any questions let me know just put them down below catch up